very much, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to respond for the Liberal Democrats uh, to the programme for government laid out by the First Minister yesterday. Naturally, we welcome a renewed focus on the climate emergency, but that's not really what her speech was about. Indeed, once again and from the outset, Nicola Sturgeon spent the first part of her speech on Scotland's constitutional future, and so therefore shall I. <laughs> Presiding Officer, there are many questions facing Scotland at this moment in our nation's history, the answer to none of which is independence. Since the vote to leave the European Union in 2016, the First Minister has sought to set the constitutional debate in Scotland as an unambiguous choice between two unions. She intends to force that choice on the people of this country before this Parliament rises. Yet that choice has always been erroneous, and I will tell you why. Several unassailable realities are fast emerging which will block Scotland's seamless re-entry to Europe and Remain voters need to be crystal clear about the challenges for an independent Scotland seeking that re-entry. Firstly, there is the unanswerable question of Scotland's finances. The government's own statistics revealed, released last week reveal that Scotland's national deficit, the difference between our income tax receipts and our expenditure, stand at over 7% of our GDP. Article 126 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union stipulates that accession states must have a national deficit no higher than 3%. Just to get to the races and be considered for membership by the EU, we would need to hike taxes and butcher public spending in, that would lead to an era of austerity max. Naturally, naturally, SNP High Command sought to spin those figures as good news, suggesting that they proved Scotland could just about afford all public spending and a welfare state at current levels and therefore go it alone. Oh, really? Well, who's going to pay for the new embassies we'll need, or our trade missions, or our overseas aid budget? Who is going to bankroll the new Scottish armed services? And here's the big one. Where are we going to find over £1 billion each year, which represent 0.7% of Scotland's GNI, that the EU, expect, EU expects as a membership fee? I am a passionate internationalist, like my leaders, Joe Swinson and Willie Rennie, and the tens of thousands of people who have joined our party in recent weeks. We believe that Scotland is strongest at the heart of the UK, and the UK is strongest at the heart of Europe. Brexit broke my heart, and I will spend the rest of my life trying to get Britain back into the EU if we leave. But I will not meet the loss of one international union I care about by junking the other one on the insubstantial promises of this administration. I am tired of this First Minister and her government misappropriating my vote to remain as justification for another uh, divisive minute, independence Cole referendum. The Mr. choice Cole between two Hamilton, unions Mr. has Cole always been a false one, and it was led Mr. to a Cole paralysis Hamilton. of government. I, I'd like... I don't know who heard you. I certainly didn't hear you. Can I say it to other members? I want to hear what Mr. Cole Hamilton on, has man. to say. Uh, bear with me a minute. You may wish to rewind a little if that's written so I can tell. And the official report. Uh, I'd be still, I would be very happy I to. I say to members, answer. if you wish to make a comment, intervene. Mr. Cole Hamilton. Mr. Mason. Could the member explain to the chamber why he spent half his speech talking about Scottish independence when the First Minister yesterday didn't spend anything like half her speech speaking about Scottish independence? Mr. Cole Hamilton. It is, it is the elephant in the room in everything this government decides. I will rewind, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to do so. I am tired of this First Minister and this government misappropriating my vote to remain as justification for another divisive independence yeah. referendum. The choice between two unions has always been a false one, and it has led to a paralysis of government which has starved all other policy considerations of oxygen. Areas which should have front-loaded the First Minister's speech, but once again, played second fiddle to her lifelong obsession with separation. Presiding officer, the speech of a responsible First Minister, one committed to the well-being of the people of Scotland, should have commenced with a laser beam focus on all of the scandalous failures of public policy by her administration. That those children waiting more than a year for first-line mental health support have trebled. That suicide in young people is up 50% last year alone, that drug deaths 
in Scotland are the worst in the whole of Europe. That in the year of young people, this government failed to meet the international minimum age of criminal responsibility and was rightly criticised on the world stage for it. That passengers in my constituency still can't get to work because of cancelled or overcrowded trains. That a hospital that has been for children seven years in the making lies empty, unfinished and hemorrhaging money. That a publicly funded childcare offered to parents looks very unlikely to be deliverable next year. And that patients still receive letters saying that their operation will happen in 12 weeks by law, only to discover that the wait will be more like 50 weeks. I could go on and on and on. This is a powerful, this is a powerful index of incompetence and is symptomatic of a government whose tactical focus has been exclusively on the same thing for 12 years and more. That the false necessity for Scotland to leave the United Kingdom should be the first thing to leave Nicola Sturgeon's lips in her speech yesterday represents a dereliction of her duties and the office she holds. She used that speech to stoke the fires of independence again just as control over Brexit was finally snatched from the Conservative government. Boris Johnson's defeat in the Commons last night suggests that the tide may be turning against Brexit. I am grateful for the cooperation of Nicola Sturgeon's MPs have shown opposition parties in that enterprise. As such, as such, Stopping Brexit in that parliament should be the alpha and the omega of the constitutional debate right now. The outcome of that struggle will not be determined in this parliament, but the answers to those failures of her government's public policy will. This should be the focus of our efforts. Independence is not the lifeboat the SNP would have Remain voters believe. So I ask this government to abandon this sideshow today. Put your shoulder to the wheel on the catalogue of public policy areas crying out for your attention. Presiding officer, there, there is a muscle memory to these exchanges now. For the party of government, the union is still the cause of all ill and independence our salvation. On such occasions, opposition members who want to retain Scotland's place in the UK respond as I have done today. These debates are exhausting and not a single one of your constituents or my constituents is any better for it. We were all of us elected to this parliament because our communities put trust in us to act in their best interests, to meet the challenges and threats they face and to build a society in which they can prosper. With every countless hour that is wasted reheating the debates of 2014, we are failing to meet the test of their expectation. At the start of my speech, I talked of the many questions facing Scotland at this moment in history. If the First Minister and her party continue to present just one answer, wholly unsuitable to all of the public policy challenges we face, then her government deserves to fall, and fall it will. Thank you.